guys. I'm so happy. I could cry right now. I finally got some bots. <laughs> oh, you don't even know how happy I was to see the money coming out and not that annoying sign saying that it can't accept my card. That relieves that that literally relieves all of my stress immediately because freaking K K Banks does not like me or my card. I'm currently in a van right now. I booked a like private van to get to Hua Hin because it was actually really cheap. It's like uh, three, a three hour drive from Bangkok and it was 2,200 baht, which is about $50, 50 USD, which I think is an insane deal to go three hours. So, and we're about halfway there right now. We stopped to go to the ATM and he went to use the restroom, the driver. So I'm gonna get there and then I'm probably gonna chill a little bit because the host family I'm staying with is actually in Bangkok right now and they're not getting back until later tonight. But yeah. miscommunication and he wasn't there to let me in he had like business meeting or something and so he wasn't gonna get there till a little bit later so I ended up like getting a taxi there and just got a hotel around the area okay here's a better angle and you can see my face more um, Y'all see that? I hope y'all saw that. Can't believe I'm here right now. Oh my god, this guy's turning pink. And purple, oh my god. Let y'all enjoy this view. For right now, I'm just gonna enjoy being here and take everything one step at a time. My thing is too, I'm like, as long as I have a place to lay my head and food to eat, I'm okay. Like, I'm good. I'm good. Not in the right place I need to be at all. But luckily there's this thing here called the, um, Grab, where you can, it's like Uber, but it's like Uber where you can get food. I'm sweating from my eyeballs and it hurts. You can get food and transportation and it's super easy and I'm really happy that they have this because then you can just like go, go wherever you need to go. So I have another ride coming to get me and then I'll finally be where I'm supposed to be. But oh my God, I'm so sweaty. I'm so sweaty.
just did some composting and it involved a lot of poo. A lot, a lot, a lot of poo. So I'm gonna show you what we did. So these are all of the compost bins and this is what we did this morning. So basically in those bags right there, we had a bunch of horse poo that we picked up yesterday, but it was really dry and almost hay-like because it dried up in the sun so fast. So it didn't smell at all and it was it was honestly really easy. We just picked up the poo, put them in those bags. And then over here, we have these bins that have a combo of the horse poo and the compost that the worms have already been eating. So basically the process is, so this was the horse poo that we picked up yesterday. You can see it's more hay-like. And this was the poo that was already in the bins. And basically, these ones had already been in here because they'd already been getting composted because worms are what eat the poo and turn it into this hay-like form. So what was already in here with the poo, the big nuggets, those ones aren't ready yet because the worms still have to eat it. And then once they eat it, it'll turn into this shredded, almost complex compost dirt-like mixture. And then to keep it going, you separate the compost that's been all eaten by the worms and then add the new fresh horse poo to it so that they migrate over and eat the fresh horse poo to keep the cycle going. And then this process, so we did all of these and it did smell a little bit, but not too bad. And after this, it takes about two weeks, he said, and then what's gonna happen is once it's all shredded and ready to be composted, we take all these bins over here and we put it in this tunnel and then it goes through here and all of the dirt compost will go in here and the worms will go in here. Yeah, that is the process. Also a little update for the farm work. So basically I'm here by myself and then another family showed up actually like right when I got here, which was funny. And they're a cute little family from the UK and they've been telling me all about their travels. They've been traveling for a while now. I can't remember how long, but it's just so cool hearing about all their stories and how they have um, like a six year old girl and an 11 year old boy and they've just been traveling all around Asia and everywhere they can for past few months now. And the kids are like loving it. I mean, they're having a blast from what I can tell. And how cool is that? I mean, how cool are those memories gonna be when they're older, just remembering what they did with their family? It's been really fun. And she's been telling me so many places to go and all these recommendations. And so it's just us right now, which is okay. I'm trying not to put any pressure on meeting people right away because I think that was the expectation I had. And honestly, I wish I hadn't really done that because it's not going to be like that right away. And the whole point was I kind of want to really be comfortable with being with myself and seeing what happens and just content with where I'm at and not feeling like I need to have made all these connections immediately because 
that's not the way it's going to work. I mean, if I'm going to be doing this for a while, people are going to be coming and going all the time. And I just got here like three days ago, so I need to stop with the expectations. Yeah, so I'm kind of just playing it by year and seeing how I feel. I would definitely like to be on this farm for at least two weeks um, just to learn about the whole process and everything. And I want to see the compost grow and how it turns out. I felt so happy when we got the scooters because just having that freedom and ability to go by somewhere by yourself is just so nice and it makes you feel so much more comfortable knowing that you have that access. So the first night we got scooters we went out and we went to the beach and it was just so beautiful. I mean there's something about just hopping onto a scooter, a motorcycle, ATV, what have you and just being able to go anywhere and feel the wind in your face and just see everything pass you by and feel like you're in an entirely new world is just so cool. So that was really, that was a really magical moment. Just track, just scootering down Hua Hin and seeing all of the nightlife was really cool. I wish I could have gotten it on camera, but you know, that's one of those things that you can't, you can't always film because I want to be as authentic as possible, but there's always going to be some, there's always going to be some planning involved. I can't be completely 100% authentic, although I would like to be, you know, I have to set some things up, but I am staying on in one of the brother's mom's house and the other family staying at the work warehouse. So I kind of got lucky because I got this really nice room. Um, but it's so cute because she doesn't speak any English, but you can just tell that she's just always smiling and she cooks food for us, which is so nice. And we can't communicate very much, but you can just tell she's a very sweet lady. That's the update of traveling by yourself. And also look at my horrible sunburn, y'all. That was the result of not putting sunscreen on before scootering to the beach. One queen? <laughs> <laughs> 